Nature's cycles affect every living thing on Earth, including you. Edward R. Dewey, who worked for U.S. President Herbert Hoover in the 1930s, was a pioneer in the discovery of nature's cycles. Well, they affect business, the markets, and so much more. In the Great Depression, for example, President Hoover asked Edward Dewey, who at the time was the chief economic analyst at the Department of Commerce, to figure out why the U.S. continually experienced economic booms and busts. That's because in the 1800s and the early 1900s, there were eight economic downturns of varying degrees. Well, Dewey devoted the rest of his life to uncovering and understanding these cycles. He found, for example, that the Canadian lynx followed an abundance cycle of exactly 9.6 years. And for over 200 years, they've prospered and then died off in that regular rhythm. The coyote, the fox, the fisher, marten, wolf, mink, and skunk have all the same abundance patterns. The cinch bug, which frequents much of the U.S. Midwest, has a similar pattern, same length, and in its height, swelling to as much as 70 million bugs per acre, down to just 1,600 per square foot at the bottom of the cycle. The lemming, that little six-inch <laughs> rodent found in Norway, has a 3.86-year cycle. Every 3.86 years, they come down from the hills and they destroy absolutely everything in sight and don't stop until they get to the water, to the sea, and they end up drowning. A few of them who remain behind for some unknown reason start up the next herd. And right on schedule, they head down to the sea all over again. And the same thing happens. What creates these cycles that seem to affect every living thing? Well, Professor Frank Brown at Northwestern University tried an experiment with oysters. Now, these oysters would open their valves in sync with the changing tides. In other words, the moon, because the moon affects the tides. And they would do this as they lay along the Connecticut seashore in the seawater. Well, he gathered up a bunch of them and took them to his lab in Illinois. And Illinois was about a thousand miles away. Now, he kept them in salt water but he covered them, the containers that they were in and put them in the dark. And for a few days, they continued the usual routine. But two weeks later, they were opening and closing their valves to the rhythm of the moon in Illinois, not Connecticut. Sunspot activity also moves cycles, 11.2 years. Alexander Shizevsky, a Russian scientist, studied the statistics and the histories of 72 countries and found that a human excitability factor, is what he called it, coincides with the solar peaks. Wars, revolutions, airplane crashes, migrations, and other major events tend to happen with maximum sunspot activity every 11.2 years. Now, here's an example of the cycle peak around the year 2001. You can see that the destruction of the World Trade Center in New York took place at a sunspot spike right at the top of that cycle. There's an 18 and a half year real estate cycle. Now this one's pretty well known and influences both the activity in real estate and the prices. Now we're experiencing a peak right now all around the world and expecting a crash very soon with a bottom around 2020. The real estate cycle coincides with the lunar nodal cycle. Now that's a period of 18.6 years in which half of that time the moon is below the equator as it revolves around the earth and above it for the rest. It's also a rainfall and a drought cycle, nine years of each. Farmers all over the world certainly know about cycles in both climate and crop growth. There's a 3.5 year corn cycle, a 9.6 year wheat cycle, and a 17.5 year cotton cycle. And it goes on and on and on. Cycles are a major factor in the movement of the stock market. Successful traders all over the world use cycles as their main means of timing the market. Cycles tell them when to go long or short. Now, Andy Pancholi of London, England, has been studying cycles for over 30 years. He publishes a monthly report on cycle turn dates, and that's for traders in a wide range of assets from currencies to commodities to stocks. He generally focuses on one or two major cycle turns each month. Now, Here's a chart of the S&P 500 for the past year and a half. Now that's perhaps the most watched U.S. stock market. During this period, his cycle turn predictions have had only one miss. The arrows show all the turns that he's called. 
They show both the accuracy of his projections and invalidate the fact that stock markets are influenced in a huge way by cycles. And because human beings control the ups and downs of the market, this strongly suggests that our mood is influenced by forces beyond our control. Cycles are in virtually everything. They affect wildlife, agriculture, the business environment, wars, our health, and so much more. As Lee Iacocca, the past CEO and chairman of Chrysler, once said, life is full of cycles. You better understand them because all of your timing, and often your luck, is tied up in them. Cycles are fascinating. They heavily influence your future. And they're the reason history repeats. Because if you know the past, you'll better be able to predict the future. Take the time to learn as much as you can about cycles.